1 Corinthians 13. Thank you, guys. 1 Corinthians 13. Please, let's take our Bibles, your phones, your iPads, your whatever, wherever your Bible is on. You know. That's how one pastor said that uh, any Bible that is not the, the, uh, the Bible in a... Uh, is no Bible. That the Bible on phone is not a Bible. I, 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 where do we get this kind of people from? Huh? So if Bible is on phone, it's not Bible. Ah, hey. I'm telling you, they want to take us for slavery. Uh -uh. Slavery ended a long time ago. Anywhere your Bible is is a Bible. Either on your phone, or on your iPad, or your whatever, whatever it is. But don't let it just be on your head. <laughs> because that one, you might misquote it. Praise God. I read from verse 1. It said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, this is Paul writing, but I have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Even though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, I but not have love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. But whether they are prophecies, they will fail. Whether they are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Verse 13, verse 13. Verse 13 says, And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Father, we thank you for your word. Speak to us this morning, almighty God. Give me grace to speak your word with clarity and with boldness. And at the end of the day, you alone will take all the glory. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's say it better. Amen. Amen. I want us to know it's almost impossible to talk about God or Christianity without talking about love. There's no way that we can talk about God without talking about love. Because the scripture will quote very well. That says that for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Right? The love that God has for you and I cannot be measured. When men rejected you and I, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why I refuse to accept that tattoos define you as a Christian, as a believer. The love of God supersedes every, any, and all of these things. There is no way you can be a believer and not embrace the love of God because it was that same love that brought us to him in the first instance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Having just completed a teaching on faith, it's important for us to know that faith Walks by love. Because people can go around, you know, boasting about how great their faith is. 
We can go around telling people of how we have the gift of faith. But we forget that faith works through love. In Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, from verse 6, 5 to 6, he said, For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or what? Avails anything. Can you see that? In Christ, neither tattoo or tribal marks or the way you look avails anything. Let's stop this nonsense. By defining people and grouping people because they don't look like you, they don't talk like you, they don't act like you, they don't dress like you. Christ did not die for your tribe alone. Can we put it back, please? Thank you. It's about faith. Walking through what? Love. And that's why when we, we go back to the scripture that we read earlier, and Paul was saying that even though I have faith that can move mountains, and I have no love, he said it's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Christianity now becomes a religion without love. It becomes religion. Religion is a way that man has devised to approach God or to make man to feel as if he's righteous. Religion. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is good to fast. It is good to pray. But fasting alone does not equate your relationship with God. So some people now use fasting as a weapon of manipulation over you and start boasting. Have you fasted for 100 days? Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. And what is the essence of fasting? Is it not to unloose the band of wickedness? So in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that we read, Paul began to say that even though we speak in tongues, even though we prophesy, and I know some people can speak in tongues, I mean seriously, that you, at times you can be intimidated by your own tongues. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Have you ever been in the service before that people will burst into speaking in tongues and there's nobody to interpret? You need to tell them to keep quiet. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Tell them to keep quiet. Because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Your speaking in tongues should not disrupt the service. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Quiet. Don't manipulate us here with speaking in tongues. No, 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 no. No. Because if I want to bless this, my brother, and I begin to speak in tongues, and there's nobody to interpret my speaking in tongues, I'm just talking rubbish. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So the same way you can control your speaking in English, you can control your speaking in tongues. You can. Paul said, I can pray in the Spirit I can pray in understanding. So don't say the Spirit move me. And because it's, we will move you here. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. In prophecy, people love prophecies. They love prophecy. Say, so even though I understand mysteries and knowledge, faith will move mountains. Even though I give to the poor, these are good things. These are acts to be desired. Some of these are gifts to be desired as believers. But Paul is emphasizing that at the bottom of it, the foundation of it, love must prevail. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Without love, all these things means what? Nothing. Nothing. This is why I say that at times in church, we, we major on minor things. We major on minor things. We major on minor things. There are too many relationships today that is lacking in love. Too many families today that people are not talking to each other. Lacking in love. I dare say there are husband and wives today. Love. Ah, that one went out a long ago. Where they are is strategy over strategy. Let me see who can kill each other. Oh, yes, you know what I'm talking about? Just look straight because your spouse is next to you. Because even as you are looking right now, you are strategizing. Oh, yeah. It's strategy upon strategy. The shame of this is that we still claim to be believers, to be Christians. No wonder no unbeliever wants to follow you to church. Because our example is not a good example of a Christian. I'm talking about love and care. Praise the Lord. There are too many pastors preaching that love. That love. Many years ago, there was an interview, and they interviewed Bishop Oyedepo. And he said, what has been the greatest help that we have seen in ministry? He said, people. They said, about the greatest challenge? He said, people. He said, have you overcome it? He said, God's love. It is possible to preach and not love people because the same people you are preaching to, they hate you with a passion. They don't plan well for you. If you don't believe me, you can never believe until you are here as a pastor. This same church I was pastor, they met somebody at a... a Parents, uh, teachers' association meeting. A member of this church and the boy looked at me and said, eh? So you can afford to bring your children to this school? Member of this church. If I had the gun, I would have killed him. <laughs> oh, yes. It might be funny to you, but let me say that to you, whether you will laugh. Really? I said, this school... I said, how much is the fees? $6,000 a year. Uh, I said, really? That's a problem for you? You think I cannot afford that? Or I should not be able to afford that? But I told him, I said, till you die, you will never be able to afford anything for your children. Oh, if you want to know, be careful what you say. Because I will give you a reply. Ah. Uh -uh. 
So when you look at things like that, you can become so bitter and so without emotion. But you can preach the Bible, but not love the people. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying now? Why? Because there are a lot of things that goes on in this thing called communion and community. Praise the Lord. It is possible to sing without love. It is possible that you can stand there and be ministering without love. Without love. Many years ago, a young man used to preach in this church. And somebody reported him to me how he, he maltreats his wife, beats her up. It was, it was difficult for me to deal with because I liked the guy, but at the same time, when I hear things like that, ah, it was painful for me. It was painful. So I called him. I said, bro, this is what I heard about you and your wife. No remorse. And was trying to justify it. Ah. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know what I can say. But you know you have severed this relationship. I'm talking of something that is about 20 years. I haven't seen him in 20 years. I said, I can't deal with this. I can't. You can preach and let fire come out of your mouth. There are some traits that should not be heard about you as a believer, as a Christian. Because the question I'm asking is that what then are we preaching about? Is anybody hearing me this morning? Paul said, if we do all these things, but there is no love, he said, the prophet's nothing. And the last time I checked, nobody engages in any venture and not be able to profit. Because for every labor, the scripture says there is profit. Hallelujah. Look at the scripture. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John 4, verse 20. 1 John 4. Can we read it together, please? Let's look on, on, on the screen. One to go. Okay. Does that sound familiar? There are some people in this church that have sworn not to talk to each other again. And yet you come to this church, you say you love God. You are a liar. You are a liar. We roll on the stage trying to do drama like we love God is a lie. It's a lie. They are all outward acts of trying to convince people how much you love and you honor God. If we really open up your heart, it is desperately wicked. Is anybody hearing me today? I know I'm preaching better than you are clapping. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because we, we just love people to see something about us of how holy, how deep. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The day they open your fire, that's when you will know how, that you don't have any weight at all. I'm scared of God opening my file to people. I'm scared. Because there are things of the heart that only God alone knows. Only God alone knows. 
That's why I'm not impressed by what anybody does. All I need to ask is for your file. And it will shock you. A man called me many years ago and said he wanted to have a meeting with me. I said, really? I said, what's the problem? He said, no, when, when, when we meet, we'll talk. That night I went to God. I said, God, show me his file. God showed me his file. And it wasn't a good file. We came for the lunch. Before we started, they have, we have ordered the food, the food came. Before we started eating, I started telling him about his file. It, it did not touch the food. I was eating because I'm not the one paying for the food. Though. It did not touch. I'm talking about file. The, there was a time I, I was not this wise. And somebody greeted me in church. We had not moved there. And he greeted me and he passed. And God just showed me his file. Phew. Ah. And he was in choir. So I called him. I said, bro, come. Ah. God showed, just showed me your file now. I said, ah, why, why are you in adultery? You know, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't wise. I was a young pastor. So I just said it the way I saw it. God is my witness, what I'm saying today. Ah, he yapped me. <laughs> is there an English word for that? Ah. He said, what is it? What is it? All this pastor, that's the problem, all this pastor. Just, just talking nonsense. Ah. And there were people around. I said, I'm sorry. I said, but it's what God showed me. I know you are annoyed, but I'm sorry. And I left it. And I, I just left it. And God, no liar will go to heaven. So what I'm telling you today can work against me yeah. on the last day. So you need to listen very well. I'm not telling you a story. Six, seven months down the line, I was in his area. I just said, ah, this guy lives here now. Let me even branch and just say hi to him. I just pressed the bell. A woman opened. I said, I'm asking for so so and so. I said, who are you? He said, I'm his wife. Me, I know bro as wife in Nigeria and children. Bro as wife in Nigeria and children. I have spoken to the wife several times. Bro, bro, singing in choir. Bro, yapping me. <laughs> so, the woman said, Who shall I say is asking for him? And he was talking upstairs. Now, who's that? I said, tell him, Adi. <laughs> My name is Adi Tola. <laughs> I can say Tola. I can say Adi. I can say Adi Tola. Whichever way I want to slant it. After all, you call William Bill. Uh -uh. So I said, tell him Adi. Because he will not know which Adi. <laughs> As soon as he came downstairs and saw me, ah, pastor, ah, pastor, ah. I said, I told you, the woman was watching us. Drama, African drama. And the woman was watching us. What's happening here? I said, bro, I told you. And you yap me. <laughs> ah, Pastor. Ah, ah, ah. What am I saying? I'm saying it's time for you and I to mend our hearts and begin to show love 
like God showed love to us, to ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. In John chapter 1, John chapter 1, I'm going to round this thing up very soon. John chapter 1. I'll read from verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Excuse me. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And he said, How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Can you see the double mouth? They went to call him Nathanael when they had the gospel so that it will not just be us alone. That why don't you two come and enjoy this our newfound freedom? The first thing Nathanael said can any good come out of Nazareth? Isn't it amazing that we judge people we don't know? You don't know them at all. And you just pass judgment. Praise the Lord. Amen. These things ought not to be so. You don't know them. You don't know them. You don't know them. But look at the way Jesus reacted. Not that he did not hear what Philip said, oh, or Nathaniel said, rather. But he said, look at an Israelite, a man whom there is no deceit, a straightforward man, a good guy. The same guy that said, can any good come out of him? All of a sudden, he said, how did you know me? Because all of a sudden, he liked the way Jesus addressed him or described him. I just said, but I saw you when you were under the tree. Ah, he said, my Lord and my master. Seriously? Praise the Lord. I'm preaching this message to let us as believers begin to be careful how we pass judgment on ourselves and other people and other people, especially a lot of people you don't know. You don't know. This might be your first time in this church. And if all of a sudden I go on the pulpit and say, oh, please, we are trying to buy so, so, and so, can people give? And then you leave the church, and the only thing you have to say about the church is that they are raising money. What do you know about us? Ha! Huh? This is the only day that you came now. You were here only for two hours. What do you know? What do you know? Do you know whether we have been telling the people for the past two months to be ready to give on that, this particular day? What do you know about us? You know this WhatsApp group that we keep? That, that WhatsApp group is something else. Anyway, the one from my old school, high school mates. There was a picture of the former governor in Nigeria, Akiri Dolu. Akiri Dolu was my senior. He was in Form 5 when I was in Form 1. You know, and we all knew him. Good, jolly fellow. Then he had cancer. 
and then he was flown to Germany, there about, da, da, da. On his second journey going back home, if you have seen that thing pass through WhatsApp, his picture on the plane, on a private jet, he was wearing a cardigan, and somebody wrote there that, ah, ah, is he not summer? Why is he wearing a cardigan? It was painful for me. The reason it was painful is that I could relate with Akere Dolu having gone through cancer twice myself. Ah. I said, why do people talk like this now? So I wrote there. I said, may you never have cancer. And everybody started saying amen. Do you know what people go through when they have cancer? How dare you comment that it was cold? I was going through radiation in this church. I could not stand up to do praise and worship. I was sitting down. If that was the day you came to church, you say, look at the pastor sitting down. Do you have a clue what I'm going through? Or do you want us to exchange file? Take the one I'm going through now. Listen, church, I'm saying this. Let's stop killing ourselves. Let's stop it. You don't know. And I mean, you don't know what people are going through. If somebody has been to the hospital on Friday and came back home with a report that was not good for their health, if they come to church on Sunday, they came with all the power and strength. At times, they might not be able to stand. They are just sitting down and saying, God, help me. Stop judging them based on that. You have no idea. No idea what they are going through. No idea. Can any good come out of Nazareth? Really? And now you are calling him my Lord. Yes, the Bible says everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. Oh, Lord, I'm telling you, I'm so angry with a passion this morning about this issue. Let's stop judging ourselves. Praise the Lord. Is anybody hearing me this morning? I'm talking about love and care. The church is a place where everybody should come to and feel encouraged when going home. I might not know what somebody is going through, but my just touching them like this will go a long way. That's why I said last week, let's stop going home immediately after the service. Look for somebody and just say hello to them. How are you doing? Life is more than you alone. Yeah. It's more than you alone. Praise the Lord. I was on social media inside with PT. And a lady wrote me and said, Pastor Tola, my God. You have lost so much weight. And you don't look good. And the way you look, it appears you have a terminal disease. I'm telling you, true. True. And uh, may I suggest to you that you please try and reach out to Dr. Lukoya of MFM so that they can pray for you. And she reminded me of how she had known me because we used to be in the same church in a papa parish in Lagos in those days. Ah, it took me a long time to, to not write anything back. 
honestly, because I, I, I just said, God, help me. Because I felt I should reply. You know, you know, when, when, you know, when you grow up on the streets, you, 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 you know, it, it, I'm telling you, I grew up on the street too. It's so, uh, <laughs> reply is not far from you. Ah, uh, hey, I wish you knew my mother. My mother, ah, uh, my mother can reply the dead. I'm telling you, I got this thing from my mother. Ah. Uh, because you come back, they say, somebody did you do? I say, what did you do? They say, you, you just laugh. You say, hey, go back there. Go and reply them. Let me be hearing you. <laughs> my mom, ah, don't joke with my mom. I'm telling you, don't joke. The only person she did not fight was my wife. I'm telling you. Hey, my mom, don't, don't even joke. <laughs> I throw a salute. Oh. <laughs> ah, my mom, anyway, anyway, let me just, let me round this thing up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was so amazed because I said, how could somebody jump to like this? Have you seen my medical file? Do you even know why I'm losing weight? <laughs> if you want to know, it's intentional now. And that's what we do. And the way she couched it, she made it look so spiritual. Because she even referred me to Dr. Lukoya, Mountain of Fire. A man I've never met in my life, whom I have nothing against or anything. What I'm trying to say is that she looked like I'm offering a solution. When there is no problem, you are offering solution. <laughs> ah, ah. I said, God, now wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know I'm not the only one with stories. I know you have many. Yes. And I know you can relate with some of the ones yes. I'm giving this morning. What I'm trying to say, and if I can only achieve this, let us refrain from passing judgments over ourselves and over people. <clears throat> Many years ago, a young man came to church. <clears throat> and um, as soon as he drove in front of the church, he saw in the pastor's parking lot, um, serious Mercedes car. My God. He said, this is why I don't go to these churches. He said, look at the pastor. Look at the car the pastor is driving. And he drove out of the church. So the person that invited him now saw him later and said, ah, oh boy, I saw you drive and I was expecting you to come in. He said, what kind of nonsense church? You, you, you. The car belongs to a minister in the church. He didn't even know. The car did not belong to the pastor. The car belonged to a minister. Ha! 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 Over what? Praise the Lord. Amen. Parents, Let's stop loving only our children just because the spouse that they married is not from your tribe. Everything is now war against that girl or that boy. This is not right. What prayer are we praying? We are on the phone doing prayer chain, prayer chain, prayer chain, prayer chain, prayer chain, prayer chain. Half of the prayer chain is gospel. Prayer chain, prayer chain, prayer chain. For what? For what? Let me give you this. <clears throat> ah, two scriptures. This is for men. Let's be careful. Charlie with our wives. In 1 Peter 3, 
verse 7. 1 Peter 3, Amplified Version, verse 7. He said, in the same way, you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. As with someone physically weaker, since she's a woman, show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. Listen to me, every man here. Every time you maltreat your wife, your prayer will never be answered. It's in the Bible, though. You just read it now. You just read it, oh. You just read it, oh. So don't spend 10 hours in prayer and you start wondering why is God not answering. Can you please go back and see how you are honoring your spouse? I'm telling you, I've been looking for scripture that will say the same thing about the women for us. <laughs> Just to balance this thing. But I haven't seen the thing, no. <laughs> I haven't seen, no. I haven't seen, no. I haven't seen. I haven't seen. I haven't seen. So, so, so what I'm saying is that even if you choose not to want to honor your wife because of her, for your own self, for your prayer, <laughs> to be answered. Because if you don't eat yam because of palm oil, <laughs> you eat palm oil because of... Uh, <laughs> Finally, 1 John chapter 4 from verse 7. 1 John 4, 7. New King James. My time is up. I need to round this up. 1 John. I, 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 are you being blessed today? Yes. He said, Beloved, let us love one another. This is John speaking. You know, John is all about love. He said, Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but he, he loved us and sent his son to be appropriation for our sins. He said, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Shall we rise on our feet, please? Praise the Lord. I, I, I don't think this thing is difficult for us to do. I'm telling you. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, uh, I, I, I believe this world will be a better place if we start to show more love and understanding towards each other. And we also start to refrain from speaking from speaking, do you understand, you know? There are times you want to speak, but God helps you and you refrain. And then something happens, say, ah, thank God I didn't speak, oh. Oh my God, look at what happened. How many people have been in that situation before? Ah, me, I'm always in that situation, because I, I thought, I, I'm always talking, I'm always talking. So, I said, ah, okay, thank God, oh, thank God. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands and our voice. Let's just thank God and appreciate Him for the word, for the word that we have had today, for the word that we have had. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt you. Thank you for the word that we have had, Almighty God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us, Almighty God, to love one another, to love one another, Lord. Help us, Almighty God, not to quickly condemn one another. Yes, not to quickly judge one another. 
But help us, Almighty God. Help us. Even as you have loved us first, that we also will be able to love each other. Help us, Almighty God. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.